The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. The presentation title is the practical research in tall high-rise buildings in the United States because uh, uh, I actually moved back to Korea last year. So uh, previously I worked as a prof system professor at the University of Oklahoma. At that time I have uh, several collaborators in the industry, East Coast, West Coast, yeah, just East Coast and West Coast. So I had the opportunities to work with them. and. The, rest of the presentation is about that uh, collaboration. So first, I'd like to show the uh, the high-rise building cube building system uh, located in New York City, which was built. And the second system, I, I, no, no, actually the first system is uh, under uh, consideration of construction because of this economic crisis. Everything's just stopped there. And second one is to. Uh, second one was built in, in Manhattan of New York City, and third one is built in Los Angeles downtown. And the fourth one is uh, also uh, in the phase of uh, uh, designing. So first building system that I researched with uh, these uh, co-authors of the papers are uh, engineers in uh, Watson, uh, Ross and Wasser, Rossman, and yeah. Yeah, mainly, yeah. So the details are in that paper. Please find out those papers for details. So let me just go over the slides very quickly. The tube system uh, simply is to rely on the, the columns, which are spaced very closely each other and working as a flange of the entire building. It's very efficient system. Also Twin Tower, which was the original uh, talk, uh, also used that the tube system. But this is a concrete tube uh, system. So in the direction of the west uh, is uh, basically it's a quite slender in the, the plan aspect ratio so that uh, uh, it's not a problem but in the uh, direction of the north-south you got to do something but uh, the way of uh, resisting lateral wind force is to rely on that tube system as well as the pole walls inside the building. And also belt, belt walls are located at the mid-height of the building. So the, the ETEPS model look, in, uh, look like this, and uh, you see that uh, almost at the mid-height of the uh, entire building, you see that the belt wall, and because the plan uh, column layout is uh, changed at that level, and it's a mechanical uh, uh, level, so that you don't need any of uh, glasses, windows, and so on. So that worked pretty well for that building system. And the yeah, this plan uh, shows the uh, core walls located in the center of the column and then shear walls on the sides of the column, west side and east side of the building. And you see that the closely spaced column, the front, I mean, north perimeter and the uh, south perimeter. So I'd like to uh, briefly into, uh, review the uh, shear-like behavior. Because it's a tube system, you cannot have a really equally distributed uh, compression or tension in the flange so that um, you have a concentrated uh, axial forces at the corner or at the center so that if it's uh, concentrated on the corner, it's a positive shear leg uh, or vice versa for the negative shear leg. So uh, simply, shear leg uh, behavior cannot be avoided. 
uh, because if you have a really good uh, composite action, simply you have increased shell like behavior. So composite action is really needed for the skew building system, but then you need to consider the shell like behavior as well. So this is the, uh, the dynamic model sh uh, shapes of uh, the, the building system, which is a little bit fancy diagram. And the wind tunnel test was done. Uh, that's probably in Canada, yeah. <laughs> yeah, our WDI, yeah. Well, actually, it's a record, so I cannot speak something like that. I'm sorry. So uh, anyway, building uh, is located in the forest of buildings in Manhattan. So wind force was not that significant compared with that uh, uh, New York building code. Uh, so that you have a um, uh, seismic forces and wind forces and also test result from the wind tunnel test. And it's very close enough, um, but at some stories, wind tunnel test governed, but other uh, major, mm, the, the main part of the building uh, is, has a higher wind force uh, according to the end of building code, and so on. So also the seismic forces are very similar to wind forces on that specific project. Uh, anyway, uh, we did uh, some parameter studies to uh, see whether uh, uh, belt what is needed for the top floor or the mid height of the structure. Also, we just uh, released the, the connection between the, the flange columns and shear wall. And also, uh, we try to see uh, some of our other uh, parameters, especially that's uh, of uh, engineer's interest. See that the, the spandrel beam depth or width and column depth or column width, which one to be increased to in enhance the uh, composite action of a tube system and that was very questionable so simple analysis was done to see which one is the affecting which one is affecting the, the, the composite action and shear like behavior the most uh, to show uh, present the, the conclusions on that the perimeter study here in this slide 30% uh, of a drift ratio was reduced by that tube action uh, and it was effectively uh, uh, working for the upper stories. And the uh, tube action uh, significantly increases altering moment definitely because now we have a flanges for the tension and compression of a, a resistance under uh, lateral loads. But so belt floor system at the highest level was not that effective. And even you have a two belt floors at the mid height and the upper, the most upper story. Uh, it was not that efficient given that uh, so many of uh, the belt floor uh, system. So that it's uh, optimal to locate that belt floor in the mid height of the building, and and so on. And also the the changing of the the dimensions. So are you going to change the column depths to increase the tube action or? column width or the spandrel beam depth or width is, is not really an easy question until you really uh, do some parameter analysis. And the results show that the uh, when you increase the column that there was the uh, very effective in reducing lateral drift. Um, but um, column width increasing also helps to, to reducing the drift of uh, lateral uh, movement. However, beam dimension increase didn't work pretty well, so it was not that effective. However, when you take a look at the column axial forces, the column depth increase and beam depth increase was the, uh, the key parameter to enhance the, uh, the tube action and associated um, composite action. And the uh, overturning moment uh, the results are similar to the uh, column axial force results and so on. Uh, how shear like behavior cannot be avoided. Also, when you increase the, the column depth, you have a little bit increase of the shear lag. Uh, but I think that's tolerable for, for, for the system. So in summary, to reduce drift, you can increase the column depth and column width. And the uh, impact of a beam depth or width on drift is very minimal. And to increase the tube action, basically I recommend to increase column depth and so on. 
So this is kind of a practical research which is needed for engineers and practitioners. So I uh, was very excited to see this kind of uh, uh, research from the parametric study. Now I'd like to introduce the second uh, uh, study uh, also done at the University of Oklahoma with uh, Rosenwald Grossman. This was built in New York City. Uh, it has a the flat plate system, reinforced concrete flat plate system with the four walls located in several places. And it's L-shaped and left hand side is the uh, hotel and right hand side of the, the, the building plan basically represent the, uh, the office buildings. And we would definitely want to use this kind of a dual system for lateral resistance. Otherwise, the core wall will be really, really uh, uh, getting large. So the dual system should be um, adopted. Dual system with the, the flat plate frames and wall uh, simply is uh, better in terms of uh, uh, lateral resistance, distribution of the overturning moments and the base shear and so on. So we use the uh, ACA318 chapter 8. Or 10, uh, the recommended uh, the stiffnesses for cracked uh, columns and walls and so on. And uh, the lower story, we use the uh, stiffness for the cracked wall and the uh, rest of uh, one, of, I mean, five fifths of the uh, total, total height, we use the uh, un uncracked uh, wall stiffness. That was based on the, uh, the, the practical uh, experience um, over the uh, last uh, 30 years or so. And also that kind of uh, stiffness was confirmed with the, uh, the wall test and the nonlinear modeling, but those kind of detail, let me just uh, skip quickly. And equivalent frame method, uh, or somebody calls that uh, effective beam width method was used for this modeling. And um, uh, we adjust the wall thickness a little bit, uh, because a uh, thick wall is really not needed for the upper stories and also this kind of a modeling helps to uh, come up with the uh, optimal distribution of the core walls and so on. So this practical research uh, was helping uh, the practical design as well. And also wind force uh, research uh, from the uh, wind tunnel test brought up and then we apply that at each story as a static load. And then because it's an L-shape at the interface of a two a building component, there's a little bit of a concern of uh, the shear stress and, and, and tension. So we made, we made sure which one was the uh, critical to that tension and shear. So the design was uh, well done. And the, the construct I visited construction site uh, back in 2008, I think. And you see that a lot of reverse for the, the shear walls and some of the heavy anchorage and uh, the pumping of concrete. And on one location, you already have a layout for the second story, but then the other parts of the building layout, still you're placing the reinforcement. So it's a very uh, fast construction in Manhattan. And uh, uh, up to fourth story, you see that uh, the construction views and, and actually, it's a completely completed. It's located in the uh, east of the Manhattan. So it's kind of black color, glass building. So it looks uh, uh, very uh, pretty. And the third one is the, uh, the not the concrete system, the steel plate uh, shear wall system uh, located in the uh, uh, Los Angeles downtown. And the uh, details are found in that, uh, the article. And that's uh, also in collaboration with Navi Osafi Associates. And uh, that was a very exciting project. And a lot of other researchers were involved in that uh, the, the project from UC Berkeley or UC uh, University of uh, Edmund, Edmonton, I believe. Uh, this system was inevitable because the, the building layout very, very slender. And then the core work simply doesn't work because of uh, uh, or lack of uh, uh, the, the width of the building. So the distributed shield uh, wall, steel plate wall, uh, was the option for this building. And it was the first adoption in high seismic region. So, and that was an interesting project. They did a lot of analysis, nonlinear dynamic analysis, and uh, they compare with the uh, test reason and so on. 
the last one, also the OVR up in Los Angeles, the colleague uh, Mara Mele and Aisha Go are acknowledging this project. And the, uh, that was a pretty recent project, so I just include this slide at the back of the slide. Uh, this one uses a, a post-tension flat plate and then core system. We do uh, some kind of representative uh, prototype building analysis. It's still in the beginning phase of the project, so we don't know uh, how the building shape will come up in the band uh, in the end. So, uh, effective beam with model and uh, so fiber uh, uh, elements for the uh, wall modeling were used as well as the uh, uh, the sheer uh, flexure interaction of uh, the wall system was used and some dynamic analysis was done because this was the backup presentation I just uh, you know sh show the uh, slide very quickly if you have a more detailed question please ask me right now one or two questions or or see me after this session please Okay, with that, I'd like to conclude my question. Okay, I'd like to have your question. Sure. Um, regarding the two projects, the very first project that you addressed, you made a conclusion that in order to reduce drift, you would see increasing column and mean sizes. And I was curious to know if there was also an increase in slab thickness to help with the mile force existing system. Mm. That's a good question, but uh, you know, at the time, they, that was not an option because slab thickness is pretty much fixed, and uh, also, I don't think it's really uh, a key parameter to increase the uh, the cube action. Yeah, so definitely, slab thickness would be the one of the variables, and but we simply did not you know, study. Instead of, my second question, instead of increasing the size of the columns and the beams, was there any consideration of changing the reinforcing steel size of the layouts? Uh, stiffness wise, I'll go with the uh, you know, changing of uh, uh, dimension because uh, reinforcing may help reducing uh, cracking and then also uh, delay of a cracking. But I think the uh, increase of dimension may be. Uh, feasible because uh, that's at the parameter so increase of beam depth a little bit doesn't hurt the interior space that much I think. A quick one, um, when you were doing the pyramid analysis did you consider the effect of like, uh, actually doing the analysis with the uh, uh, stage construction to see how that affects your upgraders and the columns connected to it? The answer to that question is no. Actually, we didn't consider the construction sequence or, or any uh, sort of a construction uh, um, process. But that would be a very uh, good question uh, that we can consider for a future study. Yes. Um, uh, for the first two projects, we actually assess this kind of uh, effect by doing uh, uh, static analysis. So I, I think, uh, you know, to see the column axial forces and overturning moments or lateral drift, that can be done simply by doing line uh, linear static analysis. Uh, but for the last two projects, definitely we did not need dynamic analysis because simply it's located in Los Angeles and so on. Okay, well, thanks for your interest on the backup presentation.